welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome for the first time. I'm so happy we found each other. I'm Lindsay and I'm so excited. Today we are actually getting our build on. I'm doing a little makeover on our tiny little bathroom here in our 1952 ranch style home. I have already selected a brand new paint color, but now I'm adding some more architectural elements and some storage. And today we are building a custom upper cabinet for above the toilet for some more storage. I have done so much planning for this, bought the materials, measured, I've got the whole design going. We only have one bathroom and it's quite small, so we have to maximize storage where we can. We only have one tiny squeak of a little linen closet kind of smushed between the office and the bathroom. We can't even fit all of our linens in it adequately and I've had a bunch of our extra sheet sets in bags out here in the garage. It's just not ideal. If I have this opportunity to try building an upper cabinet that goes all the way to the ceiling using all of the design elements that I like the best, then I'll have a great template for when we do the kitchen. So essentially we're building an upper cabinet for a kitchen, except it's gonna be a storage cabinet in the bathroom. Will give us the storage we need for extra toiletry items that isn't gonna then take up that very important real estate in the linen closet. That way we'll have plenty of room for extra toilet paper, tissue boxes, all the towels, all the sheets, all the cleaning products in that little teeny hall closet. One thing that's driving me crazy is that it's not to scale. I desperately need craft paper. This is not even uh, horizontally, but just go with me on this. Here's the overall plan. I'm also going to be trimming out that window to make it a little bit more cohesive. Later on, I'm interested in continuing that molding around as a chair rail molding and then doing some sort of panel molding within that. As you can see, the vision has many steps. So we're starting with just that upper cabinet box or carcass, if you will. I'm learning all the weird names for things in the carpentry world and it's weird. The toilet is 30 inches tall. We have 92 inch ceilings. We're gonna have a cabinet that is 42 inches tall that goes from about 19 inches above the base of the toilet to the ceiling. That's gonna provide a lot of storage. It's gonna be 12 inches deep because generally cabinets are, and I did measure that's gonna come out a little bit deeper than the water tank for the toilet, but I think it's gonna work. It'll give us that storage space that we need, plus it'll make it easier to find components for organizing the interior of this cabinet, like little acrylic organizers and little boxes and things like that. I am going to be making a face frame for the cabinet. There's frameless style that's I guess more European in nature, really beautiful. For this particular project though, we are going to do face frames and I will make a decision on that in the kitchen at a later time. I think that's okay if they might not be the same. Later on in a future project, we'll be doing the custom doors that will close this whole thing. I'm cutting three to four shelves. I ordered pegs and a peg jig, so I'm going to try that out. I am going to need Travis's help to install the cabinet Actually, I've been reading about little apparatuses you could build to hold up the cabinet yourself so that you can install yourself, no problem. I have a husband who's gonna be home later, so I'll just make him help me with that. Say less and cut and build more. I'm not nervous. start it's not set to be low enough to go through the board <laughs> okay that should go through <laughs> I mean, that track thing works, you guys. It does not budge. Granted, I had to go over it a couple of times because I did not get the depth of my sock set correctly. Totally didn't even think about that. Oh, okay. Man, I have really spent the last two days a little bit worried about that, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> but hey. <laughs> we're conquering this. Now that I have it cut down to 42, which is the height of our cabinet, we're gonna go the other way now, make the measurements for each of our sides and shelves, 12 inches. So I'm just going down and I'm marking the end here says 48, 36. We'll put a mark at 24, one last mark at 12, and we'll do the same on the other side. So that's essentially three cuts. Once we have that, we'll have the sides, then we'll cut down the length of the top and the bottom to be 22 and a half. I think we have a dead battery problem. Luckily I have a couple on the charger. We'll see if any are available. The 
two sides are gonna be 42 inches, but the top and the bottom are gonna be 22 and a half. That's gonna account for the thickness of the sides and it's gonna perfectly fit in that little alcove, or at least it should according to my measurements. <laughs> it feels short. I feel like I should go measure it again. According to my measurements of the space, it's 24 and a half inches. We cut that by one half just to account for getting it into the space. We have to take off an uh, inch and a half to account for the board thickness. So 24 would be 22 and a half. Yeah. It's always good to double check. I just want to run the board into the bathroom and just see like if it's anywhere near. Now what I need to step to the paint color. There we go. Oh, oh my gosh, it looks so good. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be so easy. I'm so excited. That's the height. So it's still gonna have a little area to put something, a little towel bar actually is what I want to do there, hanging off. And then this will be the top. Whoa, that's not gonna work as the top. I'm so glad I came in here just now. This doesn't flow right at all. Why is it so short? Oh no. Actually, no, I should have plenty of wood. I completely forgot to do something so simple and it threw off all my math. Here's how you're gonna do it. Instead of doing this wonky thing where you bend the tape measure and like try to cram it into the edge there, that never works. Instead, every single tape measure, in the US at least, and probably internationally, has it printed on the back how wide or this particular tape measure holder is. This one's three inches. So all you have to do is match this with this, read your tape measure. This one says 24 and one fourth inches. And then I'm just gonna add three inches to that, which makes it 27 and one fourth inches. I just forgot to add the three inches. I cut the top and the bottom too short, just by a few inches. So this is a great reminder for all of us. If you are new to woodworking and you are learning how to do something, just have patience and kindness with yourself. If you're trying hard things, you're going to mess up, it's okay. Just try to check everything accuracy-wise at each step of the process before you cut everything. Then you'll know how to proceed without ruining all the wood you just bought. I'm gonna make the shelves quarter inch shorter on each side so that they properly fit into the cabinet box. I think it's just gonna have to be a quarter inch smaller on both dimensions so that there's just like a little bit of wiggle room to get them into the cabinet. And I can always trim them further if a quarter inch isn't enough. 25 inches by 11 and three quarter for the shelves and we'll make three to four of those. I just made the last cut. This is the back. It's thinner plywood. This one's only quarter inch thickness. I have two support bars, one at the top and at the bottom so that we can easily screw it into the studs in the wall. Yay, I might be officially done with cuts. Oh wait, no I'm not. I still have to cut the parts for the face frame. That won't take me very long and that's a quick miter saw cut, which I'm excited to use the miter saw anyway. I'm gonna run this into the bathroom, hold it up in the space, make sure it looks good. I think I'm ready to start putting in the pocket holes. Assembling our custom bathroom cabinet is going to be so simple using our Craig jig. All you have to do is first measure and mark the center line on your board. Of course, after you have a plan for where your pocket holes should go, there's these little lines right here, there with the little dots on the top to line up your center line. I'm gonna be doing the sets of four, essentially using the two widest. And I've already adjusted the thickness of the wood down here as well on my drill bit. Already drilled the first two. You can see this is kind of what it looks like when it's all done. Now I'm going to put two more on the other side so that it's super strong. So I'm going to put my wood in here, lining it up, pulling the trigger just like you would a clamp. Make sure this part is flat and what's nice about this is I hold this in place and then drill those two holes. Perfect. Easy release. Love that part. Get rid of my sawdust. Don't know. 
After a little trial and error, I figured the easiest way to put in the pocket holes on these long edges was to first measure the center and then using my sewing, um, this is an Omnigrid ruler, it's clear and it's so easy to line everything up. So once I have the center, I just use this, it's three inches wide, and then I just place them each three inches wide. I lined it up with the center line right here on the Craig jig. It tells me it's gonna put that pocket hole right there and then I'll have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which is ex exactly what I planned for in my original drawing. So I think this is gonna work just fine. Everyone thinks they know how to use their drill, but I actually <laughs> didn't truly understand the settings truly deeply until a few years ago. If you're drilling into wood, you need to make sure that you have it set to the drilling into wood setting. That way it's not going to stop at any point or become too tough for the drill. That's what all these numbers mean. It's like how strong of a force. Make sure it's set to drill. And look at that, we're all set on this board. Now to put the pocket holes on the rest and then we'll be at assembly. have gotten the basics together, the top, the bottom, and the sides. Now it's really up to the wood glue to dry. Hey guys, welcome back to the next day of this project. Time to remove the clamps and make sure everything's set properly overnight. Look at that, nice and sturdy. Make sure it's looking good. All right, have it looking good. I've been using a set of these four clamps. I found them on Amazon. They're absolutely amazing. They have the perfect track. It goes super deep. So depending on what you're working on, whether it's picture frames or building a cabinet like I am, these will work fabulous. I like them so much, I'll probably get a second set because it was nice to have another set for the top of the cabinet. So this is my little small set of clamps. I think I got these ones on Amazon too. They're just like spring loaded. And what's nice about this is this little triangle part is also adjustable. Oh my gosh, you guys. I can't believe I forgot to tell you. So I signed off last night, turned up the Taylor Swift and got to work. I realized that I put the bottom too low. I made it a full rectangle shape. That's not what we want to do here. Since we have the face frame that's going to be about two inches tall, no, one and a half inches. In the store, they mark it as one by two boards, but they're actually one and a half inches wide. To account for that one and a half inches, since our cabinet board is three quarter inch thick, I had to push it up three quarter inches so that the bottom of the bottom shelf will be flush with the face frame. That way there won't be like a lip to go over when you're grabbing your stuff. It's like this little tiny design detail, but I realized that it's actually kind of important. <laughs> and so I went ahead and took the 15 minutes, push it up three quarter inch. It's gonna make a big difference. You'll see it when I put it all together. So much fun, you guys. <laughs> hey guys, I'm gonna be using the Craig Tool shelf pin jig to drill perfectly spaced holes for adjustable shelving. I'm also gonna be building the face frame today using our miter saw, which is the big guy right over there. Finishing up my smoothie, hoping I can get this all done today so that tomorrow morning we can get this thing hanging. I'm so excited. Hey, Pope, you hanging out?
honestly, you guys, I am sweating bullets now. Oh, it's like a swamp underneath these bangs, I'm telling you. Well, it's my favorite time of the day, the time that we get to open a new tool. This is the Ryobi Brushless Multi-Tool. I'm so excited to see how this is gonna help us in our demo. And we're actually gonna be doing a little bit of demo today as we take away the windowsill and a little bit of trim work on the window in the bathroom. I realized because the cabinet is the exact width of that little alcove, I can't get it into the space without taking away that wood trim, which honestly is kind of a good thing because I was gonna remove it anyway because we're gonna do a window casing, a proper beautiful window casing. It's just this little doohickey wand, if you will. Oh yeah, I got this like attachment thing with it. it comes with all the different types of sandpaper which I'm super excited about and it's got that triangular design which is going to make it so awesome to get into all the little grooves and spaces and then it also has like little saw cutting tools this is the little object right here I was thinking it's got these little teeth it might be the good one for the project that we're doing ah new tools yes we're gonna need a hammer too we're gonna get this guy out of here today <laughs> I wonder how long that's been there. I just realized that I put the back of the cabinet on before doing the pinholes, but I think I figured it out. This is gonna help me make perfectly spaced holes for the brackets that hold the shelf up. That'll make it adjustable, which I love adjustable shelving. I can just line it up, and like all the tools from Craig Tool, this one, of course, comes with the drill bit. <laughs> I know it's nothing new, but it's so good to see you. Do this every day, and I'm still so amazed by you. It's time to fight with the miter saw. Cut these one by two boards down to the face frame length. What are they called again? Rails and styles? Uh, let's consult the notebook. All right, we've already done all the cabinet build. We're down here to the styles, which are the sides. Those are gonna be the full height, which is a 42 inches. The rails fit between, and they're gonna be 25 and a quarter inches. I gotta double check that measurement, but I think we're ready to cut. <laughs> calculated by like an inch and a half so it's always good to lay things out before you just start doing those pocket holes perfect now we just need to drill a few pocket holes in the rails so that we can build the face frame then it's time to attach it to the carcass I still hate that word We are in the home stretch. I was just cleaning up some of the, you know, errors in cutting or mars in the wood. This is a great product to have on hand. It's just plastic wood. Tons of different companies make this one. It's from Dap. It's a natural color. It's easy water cleanup. It just kind of wipes right off your fingers and it looks and acts like real wood. It dries really quickly too. I filled in a couple of the holes where I just accidentally got a little too happy with the drill. And I also ordered replacement shelf pins. I ordered a pack of 50 that are the quarter inch size that I need for the style of cabinet and the pinhole jig that I was using and now we are ready to attach the face frame. Here's our cabinet carcass that's looking great. Did a little bit of sanding on the edges just to make sure everything's flush. Time to flip it over and install. It is 
starting to look like a real bona fide cabinet right now. And I am so excited. I definitely have made mistakes on this one. I've definitely learned a lot, but it is so exciting to think that every single thing that I learn is gonna immediately translate into my dream of building our kitchen, our custom cabinetry in our kitchen. It's going to be done. I'm both like equal parts thrilled and proud of myself and like terrified for how much work's gonna go into it. But luckily I have a smallish kitchen. <laughs> Perfect. 24 and three quarters for the shelves. Isn't this color amazing? I'm so happy with it, especially on these bright sunny days. It's just beautiful in here. And honestly, painting the ceiling I think was a great decision because it just makes it sort of feel limitless. I think a white ceiling would have created a little line like I've talked about in the past that feels like it chops it off a little bit. So this just continues. I still have a little touch up painting to do, but isn't that always the case? And the texture shower curtain is stunning. It goes all the way to the ceiling and it looks amazing. It really does heighten the room. Installation, a little bit of a challenge, but honestly not too complicated. I'm just using my stud finder on the wall. This one lights up so it tells you where the stud is on the wall, which is kind of cool. See how it lights up when it sees the solid surface and then it changes when it moves, which is really rad. I like this one a lot. Always double check your plumbing before you drill anywhere near something like a toilet, shower, or sink. And sometimes the pipe, like in our case, can go directly behind the toilet within the wall. So I'm so glad that Travis reminded me that we needed to cut a small hole into the wall to verify the placement of the plumbing. That way we could drill in knowing that we were going directly into a stud because often the stud finder can mistake the plumbing for a solid surface. You've been warned. I'm marking them with my pencil, then I'm measuring how far in from the sides they are. I'm going to measure that exact same pattern on the back behind the support bar that I put at the top of the cabinet and the bottom of the cabinet. That way we can drill holes through the back of the cabinet, hold it up, drill the screws directly from the inside of the cabinet, the pre-drilled holes into the studs, and then they should be solid. I'll be using these two and a half inch screws from Craig. Three at the top, three at the bottom, four at the top, four at the bottom. You can also use painter's tape to make a guide and then move it to the back of the cabinet before you drill. And then having a large level like this is super handy. I always like to have my square ready to check things, pencil of course, and then tape measure. I'm not gonna film all of the installation, honestly, because my husband's gonna help me and it's a tiny space, but I'll show you what it looks like when it get it all up on the wall. <laughs> We're hanging the cabinet, you guys. We're hanging the cabinet that I built. <laughs> okay. I can't believe I'm about to tell you this. We have installed the cabinet and it's looking amazing. It fits just perfectly. My measurements worked out great. I definitely learned a lot. It's definitely my first cabinet and it's full of mistakes, trial and error, repairing, fixing things, and just learning. And I'm so, so proud of it. It's not like you wake up one day and you're like, oh my God, I'm confident now. I can do it, I can do it. That's not how confidence works. You gain confidence every time you try something new, try something hard, keep going when you wanna quit. Even though it's not perfect, it's you accomplished it, it's done, it's amazing. And now you can build on what you've learned. Oh, I have big plans, you guys. I'm thinking we need a whole vlog just to organize the bathroom now that I have this amazing cabinet and we can move forward with finding the perfect vintage vanity. Oh my gosh, you guys this bathroom is coming along. I'll be back soon with another installment of The Bathroom Makeover.